You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hi, and thank you for joining me on yet another wonderful edition of Two Guys and a Lot of Wine. Thank you for also joining me for my fourth year, going into my fourth year, and I'm pleased to do my third Valentine show with three wonderful ladies and neighbors who will be tasting wine with me tonight. And a show that I'm going to call Wines Undercover, which we'll go into later. First, let me introduce Stacy Rainey, wonderful neighbor of mine, Nancy Zakor, and Darlene Adler and some of you might know her husband. <laughs> and what's exciting about this show, and like I said, this is the third actual Valentine show I've done, is I've always wanted to do a show when the wines are covered up and nobody knows what they are. There's a relatively inexpensive one there, and there's some, ex well, not expensive ones, but more pricier ones that you might not be familiar with. And even I can't remember what is wrapped up. You know, Carrie wrapped them up for me tonight, so I have no idea what they are. The ribbons will determine um, how we're going to do our ratings tonight. And instead of doing thumbs up and thumbs down, tonight will be one smooch to four smooch for <laughs> Valentine's Day. And our wines are going to cover the, cover the world. We have an Italian Chardonnay in here. We have a French Chardonnay in here. We have a Chilean Chardonnay in here. And we have a California Chardonnay in here. And um, the California Chardonnay is actually a generic kind anybody can find in the store. It's a Glen Ellen which a lot of people just see and they just buy because they don't know any better. But who knows, maybe we'll all be full tonight and we're going to like that. <laughs> so I took the liberty of, uh, also let me say thank you to uh, Joseph Gallinotto at Imperial Decorating and Upholstery. Besides doing some great work, uh, one of our uh, uh, pieces at, at the house, he's also a fan of the show and uh, enjoys watching it. So thanks Joe and all the staff down there and uh, you guys do great work. So I took the liberty of pouring our first wine, which is the Blue Ribbon tonight. Mm -hmm. Don't know what it is. Um, I think uh, I can always get a little bouquet. I don't know if anybody can smell that at all yet. Not so, from here. Not from there? <laughs> all right, well, let's. I can smell we've the got champagne. a lot to drink tonight, so <laughs> let's pick up the glass, give it a little smell. Not a big bouquet mm. in that. What do you think? It's kind of on the mild side? Yeah, I'd definitely say mild. Mm. I would agree with mild. It smells like cheese to me. Cheese. Mm. Mm. That's kind of a rich Chardonnay, in my opinion. A little bit of mm. an aftertaste on that one. Mm. Um, it's a little he heavy, you can see the legs in this glass, so it's definitely a little on the creamier side. Right. Mm -hmm. is, is anybody getting a buttery, is, is this a buttery Chardonnay in your opinion? Stacey, I know you like Chardonnay. It's not super buttery in my opinion. I'm getting like I've, a little tang to it. <laughs> oh, it's got a little mm -hmm. bite on the yeah. after bite, absolutely. Yes. I can actually taste the bite, mm. but I'm not getting a lot of buttery. Do you think it's buttery? On the second sip, no. Actually, this drinks a little bit more like a, uh, maybe a heavier Sauvignon Blanc in a way. It's got a little mm. bit more citrus mm -hmm. taste right. to it. Right. I would agree with that. So I definitely don't get a buttery characteristic in mm -hmm. our first Chardonnay tonight. And I don't know what that is. So that's the blue ribbon. Well, if we all can remember that before the, the end of the show. The blue ribbon. Mm -hmm. um, so I enjoyed this and I, I drank the whole thing. And I also had some chocolate on the table because it is Valentine's Day. I know you guys can't see it at home. It's a darker chocolate which sometimes pairs very well with a Chardonnay. And mm -hmm. if ladies, if any time during the show you want to have a bite with the Chardonnay, feel free to. Um, but I probably would just drink my heart's content and have the chocolate <laughs> after the show. Um, but I, I'm going to give this one a, I'm going to give this one a three smooch to start three off. Three smooch. Mm -hmm. Three smooches tonight. It's hard for me to give smooches before I've tasted more than one. <laughs> Can I give them after I've tasted more That's than an one? That's an interesting Or should I give them, do I need to give them it? After the t first taste. You're not a quick judger, Stacey. I like right. that. She wants to go through all of them. Okay. Are you going to remember how that it's one tasted relative. when we well, get to the Well, that's the challenge. All right. Stacey's going to hold off on her opinion. Nancy? I'm going to give it two smooches. Two smooches from Nancy? Yeah, I think two smooches. Two smooches. So I, I'm the aggressive smoocher so far. <laughs> <the first time. laughs> 
<laughs> now, if everybody doesn't want to finish that, just, yeah, just pour it into the yeah, glass. We'll go right into the, uh, the second one. Because part of the fun this evening is going to be unwrapping these and see what we all liked or didn't mm -hmm. like. Right. So next is the orange ribbon. These still should be relatively chilled, which, as you know, most of the time you wanted a, a, a cooler Chardonnay, mm -hmm. which Definitely. I prefer my whites a little on the chilled, chilled side. Now, a little history on all the wines we're drinking tonight. We have a French, uh, I believe it's a, yeah, Cu Cuvée Stafif from France. And the Chilean wine is uh, actually Sweet Bitch. Don't be offended. That's the actual <laughs> name of the wine. It's actually uh, a relatively popular wine. This is a sweet <laughs> thing for Valentine's. <laughs> wow. Now, this one has hardly any smell at all to it. Mm, right. Anything? Less than the other. Yeah. It's milder. Now, here we go with the buttery. Now, this is where I, I'm getting a little bit more of a, a creamier taste right. in the Chardonnay. Right, right. Didn't have that mm -hmm. tang the other one. Definitely did not have right. a tang. Smoother. Mm -hmm. But what I like, I think, sometimes about Chardonnays, no, I'm not a big Chardonnay drinker, is when you have them at the right temperature, like these are because I kept them chilled this evening, Right. Um, there's definitely better flavor, a better taste than if it was just room temperature. Mm -hmm. I think this might taste completely different if it was room temperature. If it was warmer. Actually, I would try a piece of dark chocolate with this one because mm -hmm. of the buttery characteristics. Sure. This might have an interesting uh, aftertaste. Give it a little chew and take a sip. Yeah, it does go very well, very well with this particular Chardonnay. Now, when you guys tastes go good out, to me. Yeah, no, it actually goes very well. I'm not a big dark chocolate fan, but with a certain, right. with the right type of <laughs> wine, I think it goes very well. Mm -hmm. And this dark chocolate goes very well with this particular Chardonnay. Yes, I, I when you guys this. are out looking for wine or Chardonnays in particular, and not to put you on the spot, do you have a brand that you generally gravitate towards? Uh, I don't. Whichever I on do. sale, is that I what do. it is? No, I, I like... Um, I like Fat Bastard. That's a pretty good one. Um, actually, they are. Actually, <laughs> you know, it's the same I, here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the gimmicky names, even though it, I can consider that a gimmicky name, it's not a gimmicky name because it's still a good wine. Um, a lot of people still won't try different things because they're not familiar with it. So part of the reason, like this show tonight, is to try different Chardonnays that you might not even look at in the store because mm -hmm. you don't recognize their names or you don't recognize the characteristics of the wine. One of our Chardonnays tonight is actually a blend. It's going to be a, a blend of an Italian grape and a Chardonnay, mm -hmm. a regular Chardonnay grape. And that's going to be the big kicker tonight to see at the end of the show if we can pick out that particular bottle. It's the Italian one, by the mm -hmm. way. So, mm -hmm. And once again, I can't remember which is which wrapped up. I have an idea, yeah. and I'm not going to tell you, obviously, but I think I know one of the wines. Mm -hmm. All right, because Stacy does not like judging <laughs> yet. <laughs> <laughs> I might be able to judge this one versus the last one. I would give this one three. Smooches. Three smooches from Stacy. Four. Four mm. smooches from Nancy. Pleasant. I liked it. I would say four. Wow. I did not expect a four smooch right off the bat. It was quickly. milder. I liked it because it was milder. It didn't have too much tang to it. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was because we just compared it to the first one and it was a lot yeah, better. Yeah, that could than be the too. First one. Right. Well, <clears throat> once again, what's interesting right. is these types of wine, these type of whites, because of the characteristics that are different from the first one and the second one, this is one of the things that you would taste and say, well, I don't think this would go great with this particular type of food. And like the second one we had, which to me goes great with the chocolate, because mm -hmm. it's a little heavier, right. might go better with a different type of food. Mm -hmm. But this is why this is a great show to do, and even to do with your friends at home when you have parties, to try different whites or different reds, while you have different appetizers out. Because I remember, Stacey, you had a great party a few weeks back to show us all your beautiful kitchen that you just got done. <laughs> and you had a, a wide variety of appetizers and a good selection of uh, wines to go with the different types of food that you had which always makes a party more fun when you can pair it with different types of food. Food, wine, good times. That's what it's all about. There you go. Good times. So we have, we have four smooches. Oh, not from you. I gave it uh, three. three. Three and yes. two fours. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that one now takes the lead. Oh, wait. Does it take the lead? Well, I would give that one a two now that I've compared it to this, which is a all three. Right. So we're going to put the orange yes. one now in the lead. But that one is the second. Uh, is everybody's glass empty before we go to our third? Yep. Not yet. Oh, well, right. I'll tell. <laughs> we can go back and do a quick tasting uh, before the end of the show okay. also. So our third one with the pink ribbon. Oh, darling, you got a big pour there.
Now, one of these uh, Chardonnays tonight is a, is a French Chardonnay, mm -hmm. which, are, which I'm most familiar with generally when mm -hmm. I drink whites, because I'm still a big French guy and I like a lot of French wines. I can't exactly recall which one is the French, but I'm very curious myself if I can pick that one up mm -hmm. for you in the show. This one seems like more... This is like fruity. I think there's a nice aroma nice to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very little bit on the uh, fl flower side. Maybe yeah, yeah, like on a, a flower side. Yeah, exactly. Maybe. Hmm. I'm going to hold off my opinion on this one until mm. I see what you guys have to say. Very dry compared to the last one. Yep. Mm -hmm. I agree with you there. I would agree with that too. A little bit more of that after taste, like the first one. Yeah, a little sharper. Or after bite, as you might call it. I don't think it was, but is having like a tang as the first one, mm -hmm. but I think it definitely has more than the one we just mm -hmm. had. Now to me, this does not have any much body to it, but mm -hmm. it's still, I, I want to say sort of a one hit or one note wonder. I enjoy the, the easiness to describe this wine because there's not a lot going on flavor profile wise to me. It's a it simple wine. Nice. Mm. It smells nice. The bouquet nice. actually, <laughs> the bouquet actually is more interesting than the yeah, actual flavor. That's, exactly. what I, I, that's what I think too. Kind of like coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know? But you know what? I like this better to drink with more types of food because the, the flavor mm. is definitely more mm. versatile. It's not, yeah. It's not overpowering. What would you call the main flavor note in this wine? I'm going to still lean towards a, a milder citrus flavor Citrusy. for this, yeah. Even though it's not common, people use that as a definition for Chardonnays. Mm. But once again, I'm not getting a big buttery, mm -hmm. oaky. Right, no. Definitely not. Not one of these has been big, big buttery, no. oaky flavor no. at all. But the reason I like this one the most, and I'm already going to jump the gun and say I'm giving that one four stars, because that's the type of white I tend to gravitate towards myself mm -hmm. when I'm drinking white. I don't like overly complex whites because they sort of like, you know, it gets me right. a little Right, and you like to cook, so it's like, uh, you, I, know, it's not that I you don't like want it to overpower your food. I do, and you know, when I go out to eat, which we generally do more often than I actually cook, I like getting a more milder white so it doesn't compete as much. Right, with exactly, the food. with the but food. But once again, you know, for white wine, you're not going to get a white wine usually with a piece of meat, but mm -hmm. as Jim would say, you buy what you like, you drink right. what you like. So mm -hmm, some people right. might still like a white wine with a, with a dark piece right, of meat or a exactly. piece of meat. Right, so. exactly. So I'm giving four smooches on that one. I would give it three. Three. Mm -hmm. Three for me as well. I would say four because I thought the aroma, I love aroma. Mm -hmm. I thought the aroma was very pretty, very light. And Does that make it a tie? So I think I'll have to move um, that pink one then. Hmm. I think that might make it a tie. Somebody's got to do the math. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Well, our, our audience is probably doing the math. Um, <laughs> I'm sure they you are. You know what? I'll leave the bottles where they are. We'll figure it out before the end of the show. We'll have so, to try them a couple more times. <laughs> so does anybody need a crack or anything to cleanse their palate? Or is oh, everybody's sure. palate Why doing not? well? I'll cleanse my palate. You can't eat on camera. It doesn't make that much noise. We've actually done a few pairings. We've had, as you know, we've mm. had uh, some uh, chefs on the show, and uh, we've done some pairings. And um, if, if you eat in a normal fashion, not like, say, a, a caveman. It actually <laughs> works pretty well um, on the show. So everybody's glass is empty. Let me start on the fourth one. Let me go. Oh, Stacy poured that one out. Did you see that? I, she didn't finish that whole one. <laughs> I already had my cracker, so. <laughs> <laughs> my palate was cleansed. <laughs> my big surprise this evening is really gonna be which one is the Glen Allen. Because I, right, I never right. buy Glen Ellen. You know when I get Glen Ellen? When I'm at a wedding or you're at a function and that's one of the wines and that they usually they have. have. On a plane. Mm -hmm. On a plane, on a absolutely. Plane. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> but boy, will I get smacked upside the head with myself if I pick the Glen Ellen as my favorite. <laughs> that's right. That's the big fear, that the one we all love. Hmm. Hmm. Completely different bouquet. Mm, the yeah, thing. there mm. is more of an aroma, but not as pleasant as the other one. There's some note in her undertone in there that I can't identify in the aroma that I don't know how to define it. Yeah, this one for my first sip is not my favorite yet. It might grow on me after the second sip, but there's a certain, I, I think as Stace said, an underpinning kick that kicks in after a moment or two after the not first sip. Not a big fan sip. of this one. Interesting, so two, not a big fan. No. Hmm. It doesn't have that much flavor to me. I mean, it's not really coming across with any particular it's not horrific. Flavor and. But uh, is it just me? Or do you, I think you said you get a little aftertaste that's yeah. not pleasant yeah. after you take the first swallow. Yeah, just, I don't know. It's a little thin. It's definitely thin. I mean, uh, 
I think leg-wise, this is probably one of the thinner ones we've had tonight. Hmm. Generally, uh, th that gives huh. you some idea when you, these aren't actually the best type of glasses to do a wine tasting mm -hmm. with, um, especially for a white wine, but they're simple to transport. And if I, they break, I'm not going to cry. <laughs> so that's one of the reasons <laughs> I brought them. Um, we don't want you to cry, Bob. But the, the, <laughs> the legs on this one and this small glass definitely are nothing. Is, uh, the first one had the best legs, I think. Mm -hmm. I think that was a, yeah, stuck to the glass yeah. very well. Not a big fan of this one either. Maybe one smooch, mm -hmm. <laughs> just because I like you, Bob. <laughs> oh, no, you're not offending me at all. <laughs> but I agree with you. That's going to be my least favorite mm -hmm. yeah. tonight. I agree as well. One smooch. <laughs> one or two. <laughs> it's hard to compare. With you the know, first it doesn't one. really matter because even before your final vote, Nancy, it has been determined that that is everybody's least favorite. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tonight. Least mm -hmm. favorite. I'm guessing so, it's the Glen Allen. We're going to find well, out. Say. Yeah, we're going to actually find out right now. So. Uh, the oh green boy. ribbon for tonight. <laughs> Very exciting. <laughs> the big unveiling. Yes. <clears throat> this is the one we just tried. Wow. wow. It is the Italian. <laughs> wow. That is unbelievable. Oh my gosh. And you know why? This is the blend. Oh. Okay. Yeah. The La Piazza actually ha is, La makes Piazza. a lot of great wine. It's uh, mm. actually 25% Chardonnay, so you're actually not liking oh. the Caterato grape mm. that's in there. Um, right. Which is interesting. It's one of the older grapes in Italy. They've been making mm -hmm. using the same grape varietal for thousands of years, mm. but it doesn't work in that. Right. And that price point compared to the Glen Ellen, which is somewhere there wrapped up, is at least three or four times higher. Oh wow! wow. Really? So that Who is unbelievable. I won't be buying that. <laughs> that is, I gotta say, I very often or not very often, my held speechless on my own show. <laughs> but I really, Nance, thought that was the Glen Ellen. I really did. Is that a very dry grape? Uh, it's, it's a common grape that's usually used in a lot of Italian whites as a blend. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. that percentage of uh, how they blend it didn't work for me at all. Mm. Right. Yeah, I, think that, for me. <laughs> I think that little bitterness that we're tasting, at yes. least I tasted, it was bitter. is definitely the Gatorado grape variety. It must have been the smell, too. That yeah. That smelled. So should we jump right to the first one that uh, we went, or do we want to go with the pink ribbon? I think pink, right? Because it's The uh, pink yeah. and the... Blue were the tide, or those were the two the top ones, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You know what? I'll let uh, it's Valentine's Day. Uh, I'll let one of you ladies pick. Darlene. Uh, let's see. We'll do the blue because it's my son's favorite color. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> As it is for most boys. <laughs> now this is going to be interesting. This is going to be. A, it's the Glen Ellen. Is so. It? It is the Glen Ellen. That was the first one we tried, or? This was the second, the second one. one. Oh my god, it's the one we all like. Yeah. Oh, but it's got a different name on it. It does. Actually, it is the Glen Ellen. It's the Concanon. Okay. It's, uh, they're a little bit, I don't want to say higher end, that's kind of a misnomer. But it's a, a quote unquote step above the generic Glen mm -hmm. Ellen you would buy. But it's sort of under a $9 price point. Gosh. For this. this is the lowest priced bottle of wine mm -hmm. we have on the table tonight. Mm -hmm. So once again, wow. and this is why I've done so many of these tastings. <laughs> Darlene, as you know, or uh, my audience knows, and even people who don't know me, I do, used to do these kind of tastings all the time for right. the last 10 years oh, yeah. at the house. Yeah. And uh, these are the kind of big eye-opening things that happen in the night. Right. People say, what? Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, even after they're not drunk. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is early in the evening. <laughs> right. Uh, so I think the pink one is next, right? Yes. Yep. That was our other favorite. I think this is another one that we all enjoyed mm -hmm. very much. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling on this one. Yes. This is the Cuvée Stéphie, uh -huh. the French. Mm. The French have not disappointed me again. So, <laughs> um, phenomenal. This was really delicious. Uh, yes. That you can find. Um, where did I get that one? That's not from the Wise Old Dog here in West Hartford. I think that is from somewhere on Avon. But it is available locally. Just go online and do some search. I think the price point on that one is fourteen, fifteen, ninety-nine, mm -hmm. somewhere around mm -hmm. that point. So that means the last one would be the Chilean. Mm -hmm. Which was still a good wine, and this was, was in lieu of Valentine's Day, the sweet bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to emphasize that even though that's kind of a uh, <clears throat> gimmicky name for mm -hmm. wine, um, they do make a lot of good wines at a very reasonable price point. And most Chilean wines, as people who've watched the show know, I've never had a bad Chilean wine. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it be an Argentinian wine, Chilean wine, even a Spanish wine, you generally always get something good and at a very reasonable price point mm -hmm. right I mean uh, when you guys go out yourself do you ever sort of walk over to the uh, Spanish side or Chilean side and pick out something that you may not have had before sure oh I do sometimes. that all the time sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, do you usually ask for matter. help or is he just sometimes I just poke around and just you know 
it's the luck of the draw. Right. Just, you know. Well, I'm you very know, adventurous that way. I just, you know. Sometimes. As long as it's not, the price point isn't too crazy. They say don't right. go by the, the label because the label sometimes is just made for grabbing your eye. Yes, mm -hmm. you know, exactly. Sometimes yeah. grabbing the eye works. Right. That's so very true. I'm going to ask each one of you, what would you like for another little pour while we talk about uh, our remaining moments of the show? What would you like to start off first, Darlene? Oh. Um, what was your favorite tonight? Uh, I think it was the, was it the third one. Third one. And Nancy? I'm embarrassed to say it was the Glen Ellen. Yep, I don't blame you. Was it. the Glen Ellen the second one that we tried? It was. Yes, it was. It was the second one. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I like the second and the third one. I'll, but I'll go with the, the French. You're going to go with the French. I'm sorry. You know what? You can put the French <laughs> in the oh, I'll just go with the French because now that I know it's the French, it's more appealing to me. <laughs> it's a mind game. Yeah. Right. It's a mind it game. Now I've got to consider it more deeply. <laughs> it is a mind game. And, you know, one of the reasons that Undercover Wines, which is the theme of this show, is so important is because you sometimes think that no, it's French, it's got to be good. Mm, right. It's, uh, exactly. you know, it's Italian, it's got to be good. Or if it's from Napa Valley, it's got to be good. Um, this is the best way when you're going to have a party, if you're just going to have a casual party with friends, just cheese crackers, and talk politics, <coughs> or talk <coughs> movies, whatever, to taste wine. Because if they're covered up, there's no biases at all. Mm -hmm. People aren't going to see the French label and say, oh, that's the best wine on the mm -hmm. table. Right. Or that's the true. Italians say, well, you know, I know how much generally Italian wines cost. Right. Best way to mm -hmm. do it, a lot of fun, is exactly covering the bottles up. Right. Now, is Chile more um, a more recent winemaking region, or have they been doing it just as long as everyone else? Uh, it is nice. Chilean, Spain, they've all been making wine for hundreds, thousands of years. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously not quite as long as uh, Italians have, but close. You know, they've always made it. They just was never a big market because wine up until the last 20 or 30 years, especially in America, was very narrow and that people didn't want to diverge from their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And what really started the whole change with that is the Australian phase when that kicked in. People were going oh, crazy yeah. for Australian right. wines. Mm -hmm. And if you notice Australian wines that you can still find, it's sort of not as popular as they once were. Yeah. Why? Because a lot of other countries have moved in and offer right. the same great varietal of, of flavors mm -hmm. and price point. And that to me is what's driving the resurgence of wine is the price point. Right. People are so used to paying so much money for wine, say, 15, mm -hmm. 20 years ago. And now, pretty much to get any of these bottles on this table for under $20 is, uh, is really good. Yeah. Even the worst ones tonight. That's my price tonight. point right yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> I go higher than that. <laughs> 15 is about right. Yeah. You know, even the worst wine tonight, and that's kind of, I shouldn't say the worst, but I guess it was technically, um, that wine has a place. It's just so much mm -hmm. right. how you're drinking that and what's the occasion. Um, that wouldn't be your first choice to bring out if you were having a more elegant, formal dinner. Right. You're not going to try to impress your friends with that one. And mm -hmm. then it seems like, too, like I'm usually a red wine drinker, so it could be that could be the reason why I'm not really, you know, I'm so biased on certain wines that I'm drinking tonight, because normally I drink red wine. Mm -hmm. Do you yep. know what I mean? Even during this time of year, most people most guys stick to red wines. Or I, I, I drink do. more red wine in the winter, certainly. Yeah, yeah. It warms you. Yeah. I drink more white wine in general. <laughs> I will I like say, it better. I, I agree with you, this time of year I generally do drink more reds than whites, but I try to, even myself, for a guy who's been drinking wine for a long time, I've tried to be a little bit more open-minded drinking whites and rosés this time of year, only because, mm. uh, you know, I might be missing something, you know, like maybe mm. there's something that goes well, mm -hmm. even in the cold. Right. I mean, it's hard to beat a red wine when it's cold and the fireplace is going right. and you're sitting it's home true. with a book or something like that. True. But, you know, one of these wines wouldn't be bad as long as you, uh, you know, kept a small pour because it has to stay chilled, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. That's one of the big problems I have with drinking whites in general, especially in the summertime. <clears throat> you got to keep it chilled. Right. Mm -hmm. What would be the temperature on the chilled? What, what would, the temperature now that these bottles have been sitting out is actually ideal. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is about the ideal temperature for these whites. Mm -hmm. The problem is if you have too big of a pour, you're not sucking right. it down. Yeah. They get warm too fast in the right. glass. Mm -hmm. I always try to give myself a smaller pour, so two or three sips, it's going that I got to take the bottle out of the chiller and pour right. some more. Because you lose so much, if, to me, at least in my opinion, of the wine flavor if it gets below room temperature, especially for a white wine. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, before we wrap up the show tonight, uh, any big plans for Valentine's Day? Are the hubby's taking you guys out, or what's going on? I'd like to know. I don't know. You have to ask my husband. It's a surprise. I don't know. <laughs> Well, there's so many <laughs> wonderful things to do here in town. You know, I always try to uh, plug businesses here in town, but That's are you true. staying local? Are you going out anywhere? Or? Oh, we'll probably just stay local somewhere. <laughs> we love to eat in West Hartford, so I'm sure if we go out, it'll probably be somewhere in West Hartford. Maybe we'll go, go to your oh, house, Porto. Maybe like oh, good choice. Yep. Oh, Porto. Mm. Maybe we'll go to your house, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, are I, you inviting <laughs> us over? <laughs> uh, Valentine's Day is one of those holidays that... Uh, I sort of shy away from going out because I know they always don't usually make the best food because they have mm -hmm. to turn so many tables right, over. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I usually do the night before, the night after, right. and just keep it kind of uh, personal and romantic on the actual right. Valentine's yeah. Day. So I'm not getting hosed at the actual restaurant. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, I'm not sure what we're doing yet for this, for this Valentine's Day. Mm. Um, really quick, I want to let our friends know who watch uh, that Jordan Stein, who uh, was the executive chef at both the Pond House and the Pond House Grill, has um, been offered to open a restaurant up. Uh, I think it's a Bobby Valentine's sports bar restaurant up near the airport. And mm -hmm. he'll be uh, in charge of that and opening that up soon. And uh, I'll keep you posted on that. We'll have him back on the show to talk about it. Oh, that's great. Um, mm -hmm. As most of you know, we've been to the Pond House. Uh, oh, it's a oh, great well. restaurant. Yeah. Great yeah. food, been around a long time. And uh, yeah. he's one of our favorites. And mm -hmm. he's a really good friend. And I wish him the best out there. So the remaining moments of our show, I'm going to go right down the line. If you want to send greetings to your hubbies or your family, <laughs> Darlene, go right ahead. Here's to my husband and my son, and um, just, I love you. <laughs> Nancy? Right. Here's to Luke and John. <laughs> cheers to Bob, Kyle, and Hope. And cheers to all my fans, all the people who have been watching now going on to year four. We've been having a lot of fun. The show is still two guys and a lot of wine. I will be doing, once again, guests like this. Jim hopefully will make an appearance if the time from his new job allows him to, to come down. If not, I'll be having plenty of guests, both uh, wine lovers and uh, wine aficionados on the show uh, for hopefully many more years to come. So I want to thank all of you for watching, for making the show successful. And uh, to my fans out in California, I have some relatives out there who watch the show, and <laughs> thank you very much. Until next time, please keep watching and keep all of us in your cellar.